a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. Verse 6, a time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Verse 7. Verse 7. A time to tear and a time to see you. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. Verse 8. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Today I'll be speaking on what I've titled Waiting and Dating. Sorry. Waiting and Cutting. Shall we pray? Father, thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come today to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, and I write the word of life upon the spirit of men. After now, O oh God, make us better people. Thank you, Father, because the entrance of your word will give light unto us. We worship and we exalt you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Can we have believe in amen? amen? All right, have your seat in God's presence. So we're speaking on waiting and cutting. So, over the course of our sermons and our journeys together, I think this is the fourth week of our journey together, or fifth, or fourth of our journey together as it concerns love, relationship, marriage, and love, life partner. A young chap came to me last week, and he was saying, you know, after all these things you are teaching us, I feel like falling in love, and uh, you, you are making this matter of love very interesting to me. And he said, I'm already praying and believing God even for that woman. And I said, you know, I said all of that, yes. But you waiting for that woman? No. He said, why? I said, because it is not yet time. You are not yet ready. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. Scripture says, the Lord makes things beautiful in his time. So there is a time for love. There is also a time to hate. But there is a time to love. I want to emphasize that word, a time to love. I also know that apart from maturing and apart from being willing, because some people cannot enter into a relationship yet because they are not yet matured. Some people are not willing yet. And some people, but for some people, they have not got into that time that is called God's time for them yet. So it's not a function of being willing. It's not a function of maturing. It's a function of you are not yet in that time with God yet. 311 says that he makes things beautiful in his time. That means God has a time. He has a timeline for everything. And so until you get to that time, you will not enter into the fullness of whatever it is. And this also pertains to relationship. So God has a book concerning every life. And that book, there is a time, there is a chapter for you to get married. There is a chapter for you to be ravished by love. There is a season, a paragraph that will turn. And then it will turn your head as it concerns love. But until that time comes, I will advise that you stay as you are. Bible says, uh, Psalm 139 verse 16. It says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before there were any of them. So God has a book concerning everybody. Some people have found love and some people are ready for relationships. Why some people are not yet ready. So we are in different timelines. We are in different time scales. So you do not judge your life by comparing your life with other people's life. Because scripture told us that they that measure themselves by themselves, they are not wise. So because someone has just found love, because someone is ravished in love, does not mean that should be the most interesting thing to you now. Because according to time, God's timeline, that may not be the best for you. I also believe that the people I'm talking to, they also want to walk according to God's way for their life. God has a way. God has a will concerning your life. And it's important we discover the way of God so that we can walk according to his counsel and walk according to his way for our life. Why? Because the blessing will not come to us except we do it God's way. So you can enter a relationship apart from God, but you will not receive the blessing. Why? Because you are not doing the way God wants it. I tell people that I live a very easy life. And they ask why. I said because I do not make plans. Rather I take God's plan. And because I take God's plan, God's plan is already blessed. Why some people go around asking that God should bless their plans? Now, that's not guaranteed. So, it is important and paramount for us, uh, therefore, to get to walk in God's way. To walk in the way God wants. God has standard of walking as it concerns dating, as it concerns waiting for that right partner, as it concerns your life partner and all of that. And you must discover that way. And that's what I'm trying to teach this evening. I'm trying to teach two set of people today. 
I want to speak to people who are waiting for the right partner. You are in that season of waiting. It does not make sense to you now because everything seems to be ready. You seem to have all figured out, but that guy is not coming. You know, it's like buying a land, having resources and all of that. You want to build a, you want to build a house. You already bought a land, but yet you cannot start. Why? Because God said do not start. So for some people, the guy has not come. They are ready. They have prepared their wedding cake. It's already on their phone. The wedding gown is there. They already know where they are going to do the honeymoon. All is set. The only thing they are waiting for is for the man to materialize. Why for some other guy? A guy was talking to me quite recently. And he, said, and he sent me pictures of his house. Three bedroom flat. Tastefully furnished. In a government reserved area. And the guy was saying, I am this ready. All I am waiting for is for that woman. And I was telling myself, now you are ready, but the woman has not come. But there are also people who are the second set of people I want to talk to. Who everything seems completely ready. In fact, they are in a relationship, lavished in love. Tastefully furnished by love. But they are waiting for that day where the guy will put the ring on it. So they are in a season we call cutting. So I want to speak to those two set of people today. And I believe this message will bless your life. Listen, I want to say to you, let me start by saying, and I want to call the chase here. Let me start by saying that if you are a single person, live intentionally. Deliberately choose to live prepared to meet him or her. Because when he or her will come, you do not know. It's not like God wakes you up in the morning and says, get ready. Two months from now, I'll give you. The person most likely is already around you. That's why I tell you, those sustenance will send them away. Your lack of aura hygiene as a guy will cast them out like demons. So therefore, you must know that you must live every day prepared. And as a single, you must intentionally live your life in such a way that you do not ruin your chances in future. Many times when people talk about the past, I'm sorry, there are some people who already have a past where there was no knowledge. But for you who are a member of this church equipped with knowledge, you should live your life in such a way that you will not regret. Alright, so let's talk about godly aims while you wait for the right partner. What do I need to do? As I wait for the right partner, what do I need to do? I want to give you certain hints. Remember, because it is God's will doesn't generate, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. Amen? I have seen many God's will fight each other. I have seen many God's will whose marriages are not working. They are divorced. So understanding, ah, it's God's will for my life is only the primary thing. It's the very first thing you need to settle. But after that time, God has done his own part. You now need to deal with a real man and a real woman. And many times, that is outside of God. But I'm not talking about cutting. I'm talking about guys who want to enter relationships. So what is the first thing? Godly relationship requires faith. Uh, that's the first thing I want to tell you. Everything you will ever get in this kingdom and with God will require faith. God will never ask you to do a thing that will not require faith on your part. So because the guy is not what he, you, you expect him to be, because the woman is not what you expect her to be, does not mean that is not God telling you she's the one. Are you listening to me? Faith means following because God said it. She may not look like the picture you had when you read an Ali Queen or the woman you saw by your side when you thought of getting married. A young chap was talking to me and said, you know, I want to get married in a cathedral. I said, but you're not a Catholic. He said, yes, but I want to get in a cathedral. He said, in Lagos now, there are cathedrals that are abandoned. So we'll go there and get married there. See, apart from having all those sweet dreams and not all those beautiful sounding nonsense, I'm talking about a real thing now. The first thing you need to settle is that you must grow in faith. Listen, it took faith for Ruth to follow Naomi. It took faith for Ruth to also believe and go forth and meet Boaz because Naomi said so. What if the man had abused her. And he also take faith for Boaz to also call the elders of Israel. You know, I was telling myself, what if the, woman, the man who had the first right of inheritance had said, yes, I will take her. What happened to Boaz? <laughs> you know, but it takes faith. 
Some of you, God is telling you, go and ask that lady. I'll say, it's not in my league. Who told you God is playing league with you? It's not Syria or La Liga. God told you that's your girl. You better go get her. Ruth was not involved in was league. And you need faith. So while you wait on God for your right partner, develop your faith. Grow in the things of God. Don't stop your life because you are looking for a life partner. Because that's what some people do. Don't stop your life. Develop your faith. Grow. Unlike me in movies, life is not always cool. My wife will say, movies are only about moments. And life is not about moments. Life is about life. You know, in moments, you just walk around, you sleep, and then the moment you close your eyes in movies, you sleep. But in real life, you know that sometimes one hour, you're still only on the bed. So in life, you must understand that you will need a trust and a faith in God in your journey in life. So help that man, help that woman by developing your faith. Work on your faith. Some of us are also in relationships that we know they are not leading anywhere. You know. And God knows. Even your spirit knows. Even your brain knows that this is leading nowhere, but you are there. Why? Because you don't have enough faith to let go of that idiot. Because you believe if you let go of her or him, you will get nobody else. Listen, if you are not in a godly relationship, what you are in is a caricature. You better leave it. Sometimes the present is an hindrance to the future. Hebrews chapter 10, 37 to 39. Say, he that will come. I love the fact that the Bible says, he that will. It didn't say, it that will come. It said, he that will come. It's talking about a person there. For a lady, that's to tell you that a man is coming. A man. I'm not talking about a goat. A man. A man is coming. He said, he that will come. For yet a little while, he's there now, he's this, I didn't quote it wrong, that's it, yes. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Praise God. So you need to develop your faith. Faith to hold on to God. Number two, godly relationship requires obedience. Ruth exercised selfless obedience to her mother-in-law by taking care of her. You are in your waiting period, grow in your obedience level. You are a rebel. At heart, you are a rebel. You, are, you can't function under any authority. Knowledge has puffed you up. Nobody can talk to you anymore. That's to tell you you are not yet marriageable. Now is the time to learn obedience. Listen to this. Life is about constant and continual obedience to God. That's what life is about. Constant and continual obedience to God. Listen, there are three levels of obedience you all, you all must develop. And we all must develop and grow in. Number one is obedience to God. That's the first thing. We must grow in our obedience to God. Number two, we must grow in our obedience to his word. To his word. Because you see, even when you get married and you do not obey God or obey his word, you are going to run into trouble. And then number three, you must grow in obedience to your parents or your spiritual authority. Grow. In Ruth chapter 2, we saw that everything Naomi told Ruth, she obeyed. Scripture told us in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22, obedience is better than sacrifice. Listen, let me paraphrase it to you. Obedience is better than praying in tongues of angels. God said, do you say, keep quiet and follow what God said. It takes humility to live in obedience. Some of us are too proud to obey. A proud person can never live a life of obedience. Because obedience means surrendering the will to somebody else to lead and drive. Listen to these godly homes are not built on the foundation of deviance, anger, rebellion, and disobedience. They can't build a godly home. You know, some of you say, that is the only vice. That's my only vice. I'm just top. You know, so the way some people talk about their vices, you think they give a word for it. And then number three, godly relationship requires godly counselor. Now that you are in your waiting period, who is your counsel? Proverbs eleven fourteen says, for lack of guidance, a nation falls. But victory is won through many advisors. I have many people and I've seen many people say no to a purposeful and a godly proposal. Why? Because they listen to the bad people. Many people are single in churches today because they said no to a godly proposal. 
And here they are bashing the gate of heaven. And God is smiling at them and saying, I have given you. But you said no. Because you see, some of us, we think that in our wisdom, we are wiser than God. You do not know what you want. Only God knows. Why? Because you don't even know what will happen in the next few minutes. But God knows the future. This talk that can answer some guy that is running you mad can have an accident and have a broken leg. This guy that has big money in his account. Have you not heard that when you lose your job in Nigeria, you become very poor? You don't know that? Oh, it's been paid in six digits. Praise the Lord. As I as the digits, so I will live for. Oh, money, Solomon say, I've developed wings and they fly away. God knows that this young child who seems to have nothing is your future. Do you think God has a plan of you being poor? You don't love yourself as much as God loves you. Listen to good counselors. Many times certain people miss marital opportunities because they are drawing counsels from foolish people. Get counsel from those who are wise. Psalm 55, 14. Say so we took sweet counsel together. We went to the house of the Lord in company. Proverbs 15, verse 22. Though your primary counselor should be the Holy Spirit, but whatever he says to you, you must test it. Because some of you, what you call the Holy Spirit is you. It's not the Holy Spirit, Kaka. Bible says there is a spirit in man. So that tells me that you have a spirit. There's a spirit in you. Say, God told me no. Where? How? How did he tell you? How? When? Where? Why? For what? <laughs> you looked at the junk chap. You saw his shoe. He was facing the east and the north at the same time. <laughs> and you told yourself, am I going to enter into confusion? <laughs> manage your life because you manage me. I am not in your level. Who should give you counsel? Number one, those who have more knowledge than you. You know all these babes, babes click you do? Babes, my babes. All of you are in the same level of knowledge. You call God, you can Lord, like they say in Yoruba, you are all dwarfs, the same level. So one guy gave you a proposal. They told you, they are gauging it the same way you are gauging it. Some people say no because what will their friends say? Ask advice from those who have more knowledge. Number two, those who have proven record of success. A woman who can barely take care of a home should not advise you on how to get a home because he has shown us that she cannot make good decisions also. Proving record of success in that area. Number three, someone who clearly hears from God. It's not someone who will say, eh, I think. I, I. So one guy was talking to me one day. He said, the way you people say God said. He said, I, I, I like to be safe. I say, I think God told me. I said, me, I don't say that. I don't say that. What he said is what he said. I don't say I think. Why, why would I be thinking? I, it's not my thought. He said it and I told you. What's my problem? That tells you the guy is not sure. They don't hear clearly. So they are trying to be safe. And then number four, someone living the life. Those are the people that should cancel you. Not that low, good drinks. See, I'm thinking of asking Busayo how to say, which Busayo? <laughs> the guy is semi-drunk. And he's advising you. What kind of advice? Where will the advice come from? I know where it will come from. From the pit of drunkenness. You know, you're about people, fool people, by saying that wisdom comes from, from the drunken village. And when you get to Bia Palace, you see wisdom. People will just talk. <laughs> Foolishness. As he speak. The man took codeine. He's advising you. Are you okay? You have a codeine, no? <laughs> Number four, godly relationship require godly attraction. I'm talking to the singles here. Now, before you fall in love, now is the time to determine who you shall be attracted to. You, not the word, shall, shall. What is your name? Ismaili. No, I don't understand why you should like that kind of a person. I don't get it. How oh, can it be handsome? Your primary turn on factor must be doing Jesus. When someone does Jesus, that is a primary turn on. And my primary turn off is not doing Jesus. You must know godly attraction. One guy came to me, a, a, a confused boy, looking for a confused girl. 
Say this is what God, as I don't have to pray about it. This is not God. This is a lie from the pit of hell. And you can go ahead if you want. You know, we are not a uh, lot over their faith. We are just helpers of their joy. So says the scriptures. I say, you can go. <laughs> we will see who is right. Because the girl is tall, dresses somehow, turns you on. That is not God speaking. That is your emotion having a convocation and a communion on the feet of seduction. And then you think you have received. You receive nothing. You didn't hear anything. The guy said, Kila, Kiev, can we stand up? Jesus. The girl is moving. That's lost talking. And the seductive spirits in you attracted lost. And they have a communion. And he says, My father that told you. Godly attraction. Listen to these dear single folks, decides what makes a person attractive to you before you meet him. Loving God and devotion to Jesus must be your primary turn-on factor. Men and women come in different packages. Listen to this prayerful and partying. That somebody goes to party, you want someone who goes to party and prayerful. They don't come together. You want somebody who is fun, playful, chats, but you still must be hardworking. Guy, face one. They really exist. You must choose what you want. You can't have a Travis Green and a Davido roll into one. Neither can you have a Sinatra and a Kardashian in a package. It's one you will choose. Oh my God. One brother said, twerk for me. He can't twerk and still take you to the Holy Ghost place. It can happen. See, my dream is that my guy will just twerk for me. And then you also want somebody who will be prayerful when you need a job. You could choose one. You either get a prayer person or you get a tweaker. Listen. Oh, single one. Some say parents want him not to get involved with uncircumcised people. And Paul said the same thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. He said, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have together? If not for greed, you see this guy, this is a Yahoo boy, professional Yahoo boy. You are attracted to him. He said, if not that for business, that I, I know it does not add up, it does not add up. But every other thing about him is wonderful. When that thing runs out, be ready. Your children may be soon be the ones in line. Say, God forbid. Other guests they are using God. There are certain things that be, must be no nose for you. An unbeliever, a serial womanizer, a ritualist, a married man. I don't understand. Are you stupid? Why would you be dating a married man? Why? He can't carry you and say you are my wife. Even become president. That is the first lady. You are the second and the other lady. I don't understand why people will settle for second best. And then they will be lying to you. Your Bible is of saying it. You say, They are lying to you. Egots. Say, where are you? For those of you who don't understand, Yoruba, where were you when we were looking for a wife? Who would have married you? Your head swore. <laughs> I don't know where they do parties for second wife. I don't know. And the pastors join them together. And then they use big event center. And the old people take them. You only see that on your Instagram. And after some days, those marriages fail. Why? Because it was just gymnastics. There was nothing in them. So number five, godly relationships require gender balance. And I define this as everyone staying in their place. Both partners are in their place gender-wise. They, 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 they enjoy their individuality. And they enjoy their singleness. I tell people when I was a single person, man, I enjoyed it. It was a life worth living. All of you people mourning through your singleness. A time is coming. Under God, I'm telling you, you want to be single. As a father, there are seasons I told my wife that, can we just reverse with this, let this, let them just go. <laughs> but you know what? You can look back. But I never want those times back. You know why? Because I enjoyed them when they lasted. You must learn to enjoy where you are. Gender balance. 
all this feminism, masculinity, all this nonsense thing. Stop it. Many men are looking for ladies who will kneel down for them. Many men are looking for ladies who they will rule over like their grandfather did. News flash. Your grandfather was not a born again Christian. The Bible did not tell me in my scriptures that you will have dominion over anybody. He said you should have dominion over the world. So reigning and ruling over anyone is not God's agenda. In case you think make a woman kneeling down for you is a show of respect. I went to a church where a young guy that you are 10 years old that will look at you and say, Fusaya, that thing you did was stupid. And it was cool. But I went to also a church where they will look at you and say, Brav Now, which one is respectful? <laughs> so, respect is not kneeling down. Respect is not all this physical thing. It's good, it's fine. But that's not who royal respect is. I know people who kneel down for their husbands. If you hear what they say behind them, you will kill the woman for the husband. Bible says, husband should love, love, love the wife as Christ loves the church. That's your responsibility. I am speaking, you are speaking. Who are you? Who are you? Some guys are dating ladies and they are doing like it's a privilege dating the guy, girl. It was a privilege for you to even have somebody, you rascal. It's a privilege for somebody to say yes to you. You know, there are oversized egos everywhere. Everywhere I go, to, I just turn around and say, ah. <laughs> This one. If not for God. The Bible says he will find an helper comparable to you and suitable to you. If it's suitable for you, then he must profit you. Therefore, you must defer to her wisdom. You can't marry a Proverbs 31 woman and not sit down and hear her when she talks. Why? Because you know she's full of wisdom. Listen to this. Be a woman and enjoy being a lady. You see all this egoistic, I don't need a man. I don't need a man. Some of you will watch late night shows that all those ladies run. But they will not tell you of how bored they are at the age of 55. So you think feminist, I don't need a man. I don't need a man. A, a, a man should not open the door for me. Am I weak? Sweetheart, you are not weak. You are a girl. You are a lady. Be a lady. If they open the door for me, I don't understand why I should be fighting for that. It's, it's a height of stupidity. Even as a, as a man, somebody opened the door and said, thank you. And I enter. It's normal respect. She is not saying you are weak and you can't open the door. But you say all of these things. But when it's time to carry 50 bags of rice, you people don't say you are a woman. <laughs> so stay in your hangul. Boaz was a masculine boss who could take care of Ruth. And when he told Ruth, oh, so lie there. And he said, I'll pack food for you. And then he said, eat that food. She was. She was ready. Because he found someone who could take care of her. Because she finds someone who could take care of her. And so those are things that are very important and key. Don't waste your life. Don't play those all those cards you people play. Say, I don't need a man. It's a lie. I tell you, it's a lie. Everybody needs companion. Everybody. You don't need it now. I accept, I agree. But in years from now, you will need. And at that time, you'll be 55. And guys will not be ready to come. That's why God has planned it. Bible says God saw. I don't understand why putting their wiser than God. He saw that that man was bored. He needed an helpmate. And he created. He, why didn't he dash him a monkey? Some of you are going around. I say, I have a cat. Ooh, ooh, ha, ha, a buying dog. What kind of nonsense? There's a role a dog plays that a woman be cannot play. You know, you watch too much movies that's ravishing your head. Somebody was saying, I, I was talking to my dog, my dog. I said, if he does that, what you do? Say, I'll cry. <laughs> you know, something that amazes me. Huh? Dog. I'm not saying, I'm not saying having a dog is bad. It's companion. But it cannot fit the role of a man. The dogs were there. The lions were there. But God saw that it was not good for that man to be alone. Why? Because he needed someone who can think on a level. Someone who could understand his emotions. Uh, you can't tell your dog, dog, uh, I had a bad day at work. I had a bad day at work. What will he say? Wake it. Say. 
వాటి రాసి ఓ బేబీ ఇట్స్ ఓకే యు ఆర్ గోన్ బి ఫైన్ దట్స్ ఓ యూ నీట్ Number six, godly relationship requires patience. The Bible told us in Hebrews chapter 10, that 6 to 37, say let patience have this perfect work. No, 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 no. He that will come will come. Can I have 10, 36? 10, 36 of the book of Hebrews. Because they are wondering of where. Hebrews 10, 36. You know some of them have gotten too excited. They don't even know that they are supposed to be doing scriptures. Listen, I know one of the most difficult things, Hebrews 10, 36. I know one of the most difficult things you can ever ask for and from anyone is for them to wait. For you have need of endurance. That's what the New King James says, but the King James Version says, for you have need of patience. After that, you have done the will of God. The will of God is what I'm telling you, to be patient, to have faith and all that. You need patience. I used to preach a message about the God, about the... Mumu God, zombie God, ATM God. I used to preach a message like that. And that talks about, you see, the ATM God talks about a fast God. A God that always just, you know, you just uh, ATM punch it. So some people just quote one scripture. You say, I should ask, desire, do you have a desire? I ask, can you give? I desire a wife. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. God told me. I pray that. No. Sometimes God, that same God who you want to be fast, can be damned too slow. I'm serious. Mature believers, one of the first things mature believers will tell you is that God's timeline is not your timeline. God may become very, very sluggish according to our timeline. Very slow. Very slow. But the problem is we love the God of speed. But I'm afraid this God can be slow. The God of the ATM is also the God of the canter. Have you been to GTB when the end of the month? <laughs> And you just enter. You know, ATM, you just punch it in, and then you have to queue. And then those people are so slow. They are eating, talking, throwing banters. And there you are with a leg that is shaking. That's also your God. The God of the electric oven is also the God of the charcoal oven. I mean, when you are trying to bake cake with charcoal. Did I? Embass. Embass. So you put new charcoals. It can be very slow. You may have planned to get married at the age of 25. Now you are 34. <laughs> you may have planned to be in a relationship by the age of 24. But now you are 32. And then you are very close to 40 and see no show. I've come to tell you that you will marry. And it will be so cool and full of bliss. Don't get into the zone of what I call ATT. There's a zone of what I call ATT, anything in trouser. You know, when you get to that zone of 32, 33, you just get to ATT. You say, ah, the man comes. If I say, no, no, what will happen? Let me just marry this one because he's wearing trouser. Many people have married late and they have still entered into error. It's better to be single and have fun than to enter certain marriages and be in so much pain. You won't believe this, but that's true. Many people are regretting where they are right now. They would rather have been single. But they won't tell you. You know the video they will show? Of them in Dubai? <laughs> and Cape Town. Nobody will show themselves punching each other. Or the endless argument they have. Why? Because you are a fake generation. It's Instagram that moves you. I never put pictures on Instagram with filter. This is where I am. <laughs> but some of you, there is no, f in fact, some people will import it from Snapchat. Some, some lady was telling me, Instagram does not even have a lot of emojis. Say, so get it from Snapchat. Now put it there. Share. You remember the story of Saul? How because of impatience, he lost out of the kingdom. Single girl, you have to learn how to be patient. Number seven, God relationship requires godly character. I know you are waiting. But while you wait, work on your character. Refine yourself. Equip and build up yourself. Make yourself more suitable to any man or any woman. The more awesome the character, the more valuable the package. It's easier to be found when you work on your character and it is easy to be chosen when you are a good man. 
Character is what defines you. It's what people see in you. It's what people will say after you are passed away. Character is the, one of the most important things of your life. Colossians 3, 12 to 15 told us, say, put then as God's chosen one, holy and beloved, compassionate heart, talking about characters that you must have, humility, kindness, meekness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Why you wait? Learn to forgive. Some of you have not forgiven your fellow students in secondary school. The fruit of the Spirit must grow in you. Galatians chapter 5, 22, 23, you'll find the fruit of the Spirit there. Godly relationship number eight requires boldness and action. The man must be allowed to take the lead. He's the one who does the finding and the asking out. It's very possible for you as a woman, because you are very close to God, to know before he knows. But while you know, you don't go and dance. Uh, you don't twerk in front of him or something. You just don't dance around him. Say, so can't you see me? Blind God, blind guy. Batimonious, can't you see me? Don't do that. Just do your thing. God will fix it up. Listen to this. God is the greatest fixer I know of. He fixes men up. Don't suggest him. Don't give him a clue. Don't overload him with text messages about marriage. Just position yourself. The man must take the relationship lead. Boaz treated Ruth to a meal to show her he was interested. Guys, learn to take a lady to the restaurant. It will cost you some cash, but you will get to know her. The church is not the best place to know somebody. I want to see you. Sit down. Ask her questions and talk. It's not as you are talking. Somebody say, ah, deliverance, canceling. No. They are about to start the Nigerian church. Okay, let's go out. What kind of thing? You will know all the corners in church. Just take out 1,500. Just pretend you are fasting if you don't have too much money. So buy it for her and be looking. Take water. Take water. Get to know her. As you are talking to her, that's enough food. Just be talking. It's enough food. I don't understand why you was, let me see you. Let's just sit down. Hello, hello, one, how far? What kind of nonsense is that? Even Boaz, in the scriptures, he bought her food. That tells you food is one of the roots to the heart of any person. And now I'm talking about food. I'm not talking about, we've got to, we got to keep it properly. Say, make your order. If you don't have money, don't go. Don't say, refer. Why refer? 500. Why not? If you are not ready, sit down at home. Let me give you four things. Four things. Four, four, my four final thoughts to single, single ladies and guys. Number one, don't overdate. Jesus has only one bride. Emotions are too delicate for you to be doing trial and error. Be sure before you date or cut anybody. Cutting is not something you do and say, I, 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 I'm just testing the waters. <laughs> Your emotions will be teared away. That's why you'll be comparing yourself to Ayo. Ayo to Fumi, Fumi to Chinedu, Chinedu to Chizoma. All those nonsense you do because you have tested the waters. Now your legs are wet. Number two, reflect the gospel. Let guys lovingly lead like Christ. Let girls or ladies humbly follow like the church. No need to build a pattern after the world. Jesus is your standard. Don't ever stop loving one another. Number three, raise your requirements. Only, those, only date those who follow Jesus. I've said that before. I can't overemphasize that. If he does not follow Jesus, he doesn't have the seed of love in his heart. Number four, remember you are taken. Remember you are taken. Single ladies, single guys, remember you are taken. God has someone special set aside for you in the future. You are taken. Look at your next, next guys there beside you, next girl, girl. Just look at her and say you are taken. There's no ring, but you have to believe it. 
God has something, someone special for you in the future. Now that should lead you and make you faithful and committed to someone. Now can we talk about courting? So now you are in a relationship with this amazingly loving guy and lady. Praise God. You are so, fam you are so ravaged by love. You are filled by love. Even when you sleep, you see stars now, literally. And you can't stop talking to the person. You can't stop seeing the person. You don't even understand how time flies when you are with the person. It's like life is on acceleration. So what is cutting? What should you do? In order to better understand the nature of cutting and dating, let's first of all talk about dating. Dating is the process in which a person spends intentional time with a person you are attracted to for the purpose of getting to know them. So, I'm attracted to this person, I spend intentional time with them for the purpose of getting to know them. Therefore, I'm attracted to somebody does not mean he's a guy. Guys can go on dates, so I like this guy, I want to spend time, I want to get to know you better. So I say, come, let's just spend time together. We have a date together. I'm not talking about Man United. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Praise God. All right, so dating is where two people who are attracted to each other spend time together. The notion of dating today, therefore, does not connote any end goal. So datings are not for Christians. Because the end goal is just like we are flirting. That's what people date. That's what they do. You say, oh, he will not marry. I say, she knows he will not marry him. So what are they doing together? They're just flirting. You know, I've, come, I've gotten to that time, you know, before you say, hey, the guy is just, he's just wasting his time. He's just wasting the girl's time. He just wants to use the girl. Hello? In this 21st century, 2019, there are girls who are ready to use the guys. I'm telling you. Ready to waste your time. He said, ah, he's using his own. We are using each other. That's the right word to use. So you see, dating is for flirting people. But when we talk about cutting, cutting is the period of development towards an intimate relationship where a couple gets to know each other and decide if there will be an engagement followed by a marriage. If you cannot get my definitions, go to the back after now. By next week, get the message. Next week, get the message. Uh, praise God. <laughs> Courtship, uh, okay, I'll define it again, is the period of development towards an intimate relationship wherein a couple gets to know each other and decide if there will be an engagement followed by a marriage. So while you are courting, you get to know each other. And then in courting, there is an end goal, marriage. So first of all, we first of all get engaged. When you are cutting, then you get engaged. And then after getting engaged, uh, then you can decide we are going to get married. Courtship is therefore a relationship between a man and a woman in which they, determine, they seek to determine and know more about each other as it pertains to God's will for them. Because each individual and families and circumstances are unique, your courtship will also be unique. Listen to this. If during courtship, one of you decides that it cannot work, then the courtship has not failed. The courtship has fulfilled the reason why it was set in the first place, to get to know each other. So we have gotten to know each other and decided, and we have decided to your tent, O Israel. So the courtship has fulfilled its purpose, which is to get to know each other. There is nothing called a failed courtship, because it actually just revealed to you what the problem was and is. So a courtship has not failed, even if it doesn't end in marriage. On the contrary, the courtship was successful because God gave the direction that was sought after. Because many people are saying yes and they have entered courtship. Some of you here, under the sound of my voice, the reason you like this message is because you are not sure whether this man is meant for you. So you are here now. Don't be afraid of a failure, of, of, of a failing courtship. Are you with me? Listen to this. It is better to have a failed courtship than to have a failed marriage. A failed courtship does not mean you cannot live ever happily after again. But a failed marriage may have guaranteed that you are done with ever happy after. Praise God. So the difference between courting and dating is there is an end goal. So Christians don't use the word dating because we are not flatters. If there is a word like that, we are not how to flirt. Before a guy asks you out, he must have seen an end goal, which is marriage. 
That's why I don't understand why 100 level students should enter a relationship. Amy was telling me one day, I said, oh, girl, she was crying. I said, why is he crying? He said, the boy says, it's not there again. I said, he's stupid, she's stupid. <laughs> this girl should be looking for CGPA. She's crying. Why is she crying? He said, the girl broke her. I said, why did you keep the heart? It's true. It may look very funny, but there are seasons of your life that that's not what is needed. Except you just want to sleep with one another. Of course, I know there are people in this church who sleep around. Well, I don't fool myself. The devil came to the presence of God. Do you think witches will not come here? Hallelujah. Somebody's thinking, why is he looking in my direction? <laughs> Let love be without hypocrisy. Romans chapter 12 and verse 9. Love must be without simulation. It's not, it should be natural. It should just flow. So if you have moved away from waiting to cutting, you are in a cutting level now. I'm not your mate. So I'm talking to those people who have moved up. Praise God. They are in high league. They have left championship. They are now in premier league. Praise God. And they, are in, they are not in secunda. They are in La Liga. I want to talk to you. Now things you must do while cutting. And for some of us, you need to know it because you will soon get there. Praise God. I believe there are a lot of weddings in 2020, like we prayed for shift, and there are a lot of weddings in 2021. That guy is around the corner. I tell somebody, he's around the corner. She's around the corner. Praise God. All right, number one, move slowly. In courtship, move slowly. Get into relationships slowly. Break up quickly. Move into relationship slowly, but break up quickly. Don't be in a rush to get into a relationship with anybody. Ask questions. Ask them, guys. Study the lady. Know her. There is no surprise, sister. Know her fully, intimately. Know her by the spirit, by knowledge, by information. Go all around her social media page. Check everything out. Don't be taken for granted. See what he posts. He will tell you what he thinks. Be very slow. Tell me yes. Mm -mm. Be slow. But when you want to get out, get out very fast. If you see signs you don't like, get out. If he verbally or physically abuse you, get out. So he tried to rape you once. I say, ah, it's, it's the devil. Get out. <laughs> he slaps you. Bam! What did I say? You are crying. Don't cry. Say, thank you, Jesus. And go. It's still a courtship. Get out. You enter his house. Here was a aim with a UFO. People who are long in this church know what UFO is. An unclad female object. On the bed. Don't stay there and say. <laughs> no. Get out. That's your passport. That is your stars in heaven that has not left you. Like the Yorubas will say. Your fathers are not sleeping. Your great-grandfathers are not sleeping in their village. Get out. You have a greater chance of getting married and living ever happily with a broken courtship than with a broken marriage. A broken courtship can be fixed. A broken marriage cannot. Because you also have fruits, children, who are scarred for life. Number two, spiritual growth. That's what courtship is about. Spiritual growth. Guys, be the leader in the relationship. By picking the places to go, <laughs> according to your pocket, praise God. Hallelujah. Asking her what she wants. Making decisions on the date. Taking care of her and not advantage of her. Get to know her. Talk to her. Study the word and pray together. You need to lead. Read the Bible separately. Talk about it together on the phone. Read it together if it's possible. Pray daily. Talk about sermons. Talk about small groups. Talk about what God is doing in your life and the life of others. Talk about testimonies of faith. Talk about spiritual things. You are not supposed to be couples who are, who are doing a Linda Ikeji blog. Every time you people talk. Did you see on Instagram? Did you see on Twitter? What's your problem? Are you trying to start a CNN? Get to know each other. Grow spiritually. A time of courtship is a time where you channel your spirit towards the same direction. 
You channel your spirit towards the same direction in a time of courtship. Number three, get to know the family. You are not just dating the person. Hello? You are dating the family. The family. The family. I'm telling you, if the mother is a witch, congratulations, your mother-in-law is not a witch. I'm telling you, it's as basic as that. Some people think just, they just fall in love with a cute lady and is a cute lady. I'm just interested in a cute lady. Hello? She has brothers. They might not be so nice, but they are your in-laws. And you need to learn to deal with them. Get to know the family at this time of courtship. Many times we fall in love with a person, but we do life with their family. The better you, know, the better you get to know the family while courting, the better prepared you are. Prepare. Like I said the last time, last week, I said my dad told me, see her mother, see her mother. That's the way she will look. That's getting to know the family. She may be as slim as, um, let me mention names here. You shall understand. She may be as slim as slim in your head. But if her mom is as big in your head also, <laughs> understand that you should try and see her grandmother <laughs> or ask how her grandmother looks. I'm telling you. Genetics might skip one. It can't skip twice. I'm telling you the truth. If it does it the second, and you see her also, big in your head. You know what I mean? Sweetheart, ask yourself, can I deal with a big woman? Because this loquacious person will soon become the big in your head. You see, courting is a time of preparation. You are not taken by surprises. Another thing, have life conversations. Really talk about life. Talk about your plans and your purpose. Let not your conversation be about shapes, figures, looks, prada. Zanetti, Zenoti. Let it be about life. You remember you are laying foundation for your home. Talk about the things that count. Talk about the things you want to do, what you want to be. What kind of husband or wife you want to have. We want to be. Talk about how many children you want to have. Number five, set sensual boundaries. Sensual boundaries. Sex is a no no. You see, I changed my words. Sex is a no no. <laughs> Though you are getting to know each other, but that doesn't mean sex is permitted. Sex is only permitted in the confines of a marriage by God. Both partners should take responsibility for setting the limits. Hugging some girls in a full gospel rema hug, like we say, is giving them trouble. Because that's fire. But some guys, some girls, just hold them behind them like this. Be truthful while cutting. Sweetheart, don't touch me here again. Is someone listening to this wisdom? Is someone listening? It's not until you are naked that you set fire on. I'm preaching this next week. There are certain things that set fire on. Don't try it. And know each other's individual characteristics. Some girls don't touch their hair. Don't touch it. My baby. Don't touch the hair. Say your ear is fine. He says, Shabi is my fiancé. Shabi is, no! If you don't want to do it, then don't play with it. Be guided. Love is the fruit of the Spirit. From love comes self-control. Operate in love, not lust. <laughs> Number six, allow the Holy Spirit to direct and lead you. If you feel convicted about certain behaviors, stop doing them. Let's go and swim together. Let's go and swim together. Who swims in Takara on? <laughs> Who does that? This is a lady you are already ravished in love with. See the way she's dressed. And she enters the swim. Pam, and the whole thing pumped on her body like that. Let's be real. There are some things we should not do. 
Some said, do you go swimming? I said, go and do what? God created the fish for the seas, man for land. <laughs> Number seven. Because of our time and your money. Number seven. Number seven, pray together and pray continually. Pray about that relationship. Pray for the fullness of God's will and plan. Because you are lavished in love does not mean the devil is not at work. The devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. When the God himself, even God, your creator asks the devil, guy, where did they come from? Where did they come from? He said from walking to and fro the whole life. You think he was going on visitation? It was wrecking havoc. So you must manage and defend your territory. If you are ravished in love, then pray about that love so that the devil will not come and put and plant star and miss your wits. You must pray together. The couples that pray are the couples that will be elevated. Listen to this. Prayer is a stabilizing staff in the mayor of life. English. Mirror of life. The staff that will stabilize you. You know when you are in this, in this mirror, in the mud. You just put the staff down. It holds you, stabilizes you. When that relationship enters trouble, prayer is what stabilizes it. Some of you, you know it's the devil at work. You just say, don't talk to me like that again. The guy has sparked. He has sparked. You know he does not do that before. The devil has come and signed. You know when you enter your office, you sign. <laughs> I have come. <laughs> I'll give you two more. Number eight, put on the whole armor of God. Daily. You need all the time to put on the whole armor of God. Are you spending your time with God? Or now that you are in love, you are spending all your life with that guy. I am tired of people being in relationship and they have lost their brain. They have lost their individuality. When we see A, we must see B. What's your problem? Don't you guys have a life? The two has not become one. The two are still two. You are caught in not married. And suddenly when they are married, they don't work together anymore. So what am I saying? Let every man remain in their own calling. If that girl is a singer, don't try and sing. Preach. And let that singer sing it. Not like she is come for Riaza. You are already outside. Ah, ah. That's your problem. She cannot go home alone again because now she's in a relationship. Individuals. Be individuals. Put on the whole armor of God. And then finally, I love this number nine. In courtship, after courtship, you know what? Get married, have babies. I get married and have babies. <laughs> you see the order in which that comes. Get married and have babies. PFM, MAMG. We are not called in energized church to name babies. <laughs> so you get married and then have babies. You don't have babies and then get married and say it's called baby mama. The standard of this world is not the standard of God. Because everybody have now become baby mamas. A girl told me. He said, I don't like guys. I said, that's fantastic. I said, you must also not like sex. He said, no, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I don't want to get married. I said, that means you don't want to have babies. He said, no. I want to have babies. But I don't want to get married. Ah. Sorry, <laughs> babies come with another responsibility. It's called man. It's called man. So all this packaging on Instagram affecting your brain. All this, the way the devil puts and puts a culture in our head. Making it look cool, collected, that you're a single mama. They don't call them single woman. They call mama. Just to make it swish. And all those single... Uh, somebody's girlfriend just got delivered. I won't mention his name. His girlfriend just delivered his baby. Praise God. If you know about that, just wave your hand like this in church. Uh, 
Some of you are so carnal. I don't know how you know this kind of information. <laughs> All right, so she just gave birth to a child. And everybody makes it look so very cool. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. What happens to marriage? What happens to doing one before the other? Listen to this. I will not congratulate you if you get babies before you get married. Because I don't know where it came from. And your name is not Mary. And we have seen the savior of the world. We are not waiting for another one. So that the virgin with death we find with a child has been fulfilled already. There's something called being alone. Don't let me get into next week's message. Emotions. Fire and sex. He hugs me, he sets me on fire. <laughs> you provide. I provide the sacrifice. So I've spoken to you singles, I've spoken to you, those of you who are in courtship. You need to deliberately reroute your relationships and your courtship so that you get the real benefit of it. You need to start planning, have life conversations. Don't just talk about movies and just laugh, I laugh. Because in real life, I'll tell you what courtship is about. Courtship is about marrying someone without staying with them. It's about letting someone know you are responsible. That's what it's about. Hello, where are you? I'm fine. La, la, la. Courtship is also a time of developing trust. It's a time of developing a lot of trust. That's what courtship is about. So I think I'm done. I'll see you guys next week. You look so awesome and beautiful. Thank you for listening. Raise up your hands. Stand up on your feet. Let's try and go home now. <laughs>